in this short video, I want to think about this question. How can we make sure that a placement test, or, or any other test for that matter, is culturally fair? So let's start by thinking about what cultural fairness actually means. And I'd like to define it, broadly speaking, as trying to make sure that no one group of test takers has a particular advantage or disadvantage over any other group. And I'm going to focus on four measures we can take to achieve this. First, we think about the fairness of the topics and questions presented. So a simple example would be a uh, a reading test about an Italian artist, let's say Caravaggio. So art history fans, or, or anyone from Italy, might already feel confident about this topic. So if there were questions like, um, where was Caravaggio born? Or what kind of art was he famous for? Then they might already know the answers without even having to read the text. So this would be unfair. And people who know about the topic have a, a definite cultural advantage over people who don't. So that means that the first step is that item writers need to avoid writing that sort of question, that sort of item. Okay. A second way of ensuring fairness is to avoid culturally sensitive topics like uh, politics and religion. Uh, and obviously to avoid... Um, gender and racial stereotypes. So we, we don't want some test takers feeling uncomfortable or feeling unnecessary strain um, because of the topics that the item writers have chosen. But you might say, well, a language test is bound to have some cultural and political references to the country where the language is spoken. And that sounds convincing, but English is a global language. It's the official language of more than 50 countries. And it's spoken all over the world in education and business. So to reflect this, an English test should not focus on the culture of any one English-speaking country. And uh, as a simple example, in a listening test, um, there should be a range of different accents from different English-speaking countries and perhaps even countries uh, where English is a second language and is widely spoken. Now, all of this may seem a bit subjective. However well-intentioned uh, well and however professional an author might be, they still, they're still human beings, and they still have their own conscious and unconscious cultural biases. So we need to take more steps. Um, and the, the third step is to have a test item, each test item, reviewed by a panel of editors from different cultures. And it is, it's amazing how often this throws up uh, issues that the authors haven't even thought about. And the final step is, of course, data analysis. So the statistics are very good at showing us whether groups of test takers from different cultures respond differently to the same test item. So, these are four of the steps that are taken by test designers to ensure that a test is culturally fair and that the test takers' scores are a fair representation of their ability.